What's crack a It's your boy Broshmo, just in case you did not know. So, finally here, my seven round mock draft. No trades, because trades in a seven round mock draft, kind of crazy, kind of wild. I'm going to separate this into three videos. So, you're going to have day one, day two, and then day three. And hopefully, I put them in cards at the top of the video. You could just go right there if you want to check out the others. Or you could just go on page and do that. But, yeah been a wild crazy ride don't forget come bro and subscribe uh leave a thumbs up really helps the video and i appreciate it it's always much appreciated and much obliged and there's gonna be a lot of different takes here because i mean it's a seven round mock draft you know this is just my opinion what maybe it's kind of a combination of what i would do some of the rumors i've read or uh maybe good team fit so there a lot there's a lot bundled up into all of this so you probably have a different opinion more than likely you do just be cool in the comments and let's have some good civil discourse because i mean hey man two things could be right at the same time but let's go ahead let's dive in we're gonna start with the first pick cincinnati Bengals are going joe burrow of course it's an obvious pick they're gonna move away from andy dalton and get their home state hero and then chase young going to the redskins he's the best player in the draft so if they're gonna rem if they're gonna remain at the with the second pick, they're probably gonna go with Young. And then I got the Detroit Lions going, Jeffrey, Akuda. I it just Simmons would be nice here, but I don't think Patricia's defense values someone of that skill set in Simmons. I mean, if you're gonna strap Simmons to just like a box safety role or a linebacker role, then you're not gonna really you're not getting what makes him a top five pick. You gotta like use him in a variety of in a variety of different roles like kind of like a jack or a joker you know so instead they go with something patricia's defense ex values extremely pr a press man corner and they get best corner in this draft in my boy jeffrey and then the new york giants go in mckay back i kind of gave in to this one i mean you know that saying where there's smoke there's fire i mean gentlemen he loves he loves the perception and perception of athleticism and he loves trench the trenches so tristan War Werfs was a big mock for me more times than not but i'm gonna kind of go with the rumors here i'd rather like i said i'd rather like a isaiah simmons or a tristan Werfs, but i mean he's been the talk of the town since the combine so you can immediately plan him into the right tackle position and then i got the dolphins going justin herbert uh, I know it, from everything from Tua's video uh, workout, it looks like everything checked out. But the word in Miami right now is, I know I just said where there's smoke, there's fire. But you also got to keep in mind, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors going around the draft. So it's kind of hard to pinpoint the accuracy of all these rumors. But I mean, <sighs> you know, it's a tough one. It's a tough one for me because... There's been buzzing for at least a couple of months now that Chris uh, Greer, he likes him some uh, some Justin Herbert. And you know what? The kid's got tons of arm talent and the right system, the right coaching. Herbert can be special. So it's kind of like this pick's probably going to be a quarterback, but which one? So I'm going with Herbert. And then I got Tua going to the Chargers. And Tua's just the biggest wild card in this draft. And he really makes it tough to mock mock him where he may go but i got two reasons why the chargers go with him instead of maybe an isaiah simmons or an offensive tackle one he has very high potential tua has tremendous potential but more importantly two he's a name that could really help a struggling fan base they like it can bring fans to games sell a lot of merch they need to put butts in seats and tua can do that just from a name recognition then the carolina panthers they go ahead get isaiah simmons uh they get their replacement for luke keekley and i fully trust phil snow to properly use isaiah simmons arizona cardinals tristan Wirfs. i mean he can be an eventual or immediate replacement for marcus gilbert and his natural i feel like his natural position well it is his natural position he mostly played right tackle there at iowa so it kind of works out. He has the athleticism Kingsbury, I imagine, would desire for his offensive line. And then the Jaguars, they're going Derek Brown. I've just given into this. Uh, 
I mean, I don't think they'd be making the right call. I don't, if you're not new to the channel, you know kind of how I feel about Derrick Brown. I'm cool with him being a top 10 or a top 20, top 15 pick. But here in the top 10, I just don't think there's value. I think I think it'd be wiser for them to acquire weapons for Uncle Rico. But realistically, Jaguars, they sucked at the at run defense. They gutted a lot of their defensive line. So they'll probably go Derek Brown here. Cleveland Browns getting them Andrew Thomas. Now, Browns, they get a left tackle. Thomas, he's very underrated. And I think he's being slept on in this draft. Stefanski, he'll love the experience. And uh, Thomas's ability to be a run blocker. Now you got Cochlin there on the right side. Thomas on the left. New York John, or uh, New York Jets, excuse me, get Jerry Judy. I mean, they, they addressed their offensive line all throughout free agency, but they really neglected receiver. I mean, you could say, oh yeah, they they added a, they added Rashad Perriman. Perriman. That ain't big. That ain't big. So they need to get a home run threat for Darnold and that's Jerry Judy whenever he touches the ball. Las Vegas Raiders, they're going CD Lamb. Now, Lamb would be a receiver I think Derek Carr could truly appreciate. He's an absolute playmaker with the ball in his hands, and he matches well with Carr's skill set and passing indices. I don't know why I said it that way. San Francisco 49ers, they're going Henry Ruggs. We got back to back, back to back to back receivers. So, Manuel Sanders, he kind of opened up the 49ers passing attack. He's gone, so they really need to snag someone who plays to the speed of this offense, or at least the speed this offense wants to play. Two rugs. He's much more than just a vertical threat. He's also a tremendous route runner in that respect. Then we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're going Jedrick Wills. Uh, the, they invested significant money to keep Donovan Smith here. In, well, I guess there in Tampa not too long ago. So I think it'd be better to move him to the to the left side but uh, they probably keep him there or move him to the right side but they'll probably keep him there on the left demar donson he's gone so they need a right tackle perfect wills that's his natural position he played right tackle all of last season he has a great deal of athleticism there we go and he could develop into a good ass protector man words i'm gonna be stumbling on. i got 250 some picks to go through Ugh. denver broncos they're going javon Kinlaw, I can't trade down in this scenario, so it kind of made it tough. Um, the top receivers are off the board, so this pick, for me, like I said, is a trade down spot. You could go corner. I'd like to maybe go Christian Fulton, but it doesn't sound like too many NFL teams are actually that high on Fulton. Plus, Kinlaw, I have a top 10 grade on Kinlaw, so he's the pick. Shelby Harris is on a one-year deal, and if the Broncos want to save cap, they can cut Darrell, um, Darrell Casey next season with no dead cap. Atlanta Falcons go CJ Henderson. I mean, the Falcons, they need they address defensive line in free agency. So they should probably focus on corner with this pick, or at least secondary for the most part. Henderson, he has all the elite traits you want to see from it, like from a cover three corner. So I think Atlanta, like, hey, that's our guy. That's our guy. The Dallas Cowboys. Xavier McKinney. Safety at Alabama. This this one was kind of a tough one for me because I kind of tossed and turned with Christian Fulton. But I mean, there's just so many things that were that link McKinney to Dallas that I just kind of went with it here. Quite possibly could be Fulton, could be someone else, could be a uh, Playbon Chazon. But I'm going to go with McKinney here. Aha, Clint, Nor uh, Clint Dix. He's a short term solution. And given their uh, cap predicament currently, I think they would. Love that. Well, they wouldn't could, couldn't give him a long deal, so they'd love to get a rookie contract. Which McKinney, like I said, rumored high to be on their board. Josh Jones going to the Dolphins here. Now, it's likely going to be a tackle here. So you got the choice of Austin Jackson, who's got a ton of hype, and then Josh Jones, who I absolutely love. See, Jackson, he may be getting a lot of hype, but I think the safe bet, without a doubt, for me is Josh Jones. He's a brick wall. He's a brick wall there at Houston. He even has some impressive games versus uh, Power 5 schools like Oklahoma this past season. Las Vegas Raiders, they get Christian Fulton. Ideally, the Raiders, they come, they're come. they going to come away with the receiver and a corner in the first round if they don't trade down or do any funky stuff like that. 
So they do it. They nail the game plan. Good job for you, Raiders. You're doing good. Fulton, he officer offers a lot of versatility, but I think he actually is a much better zone corner than man corner, which they asked him to play a lot of man last year. So I think this is perfect for him to be a nice young tandem with uh, Trevon Mullen. Jacksonville Jaguars, they go Austin Jackson. This is a guy I have a second round grade on actually, but like I said, there's a lot of buzz right now around Austin Jackson. And you know, it's not a bad option for the Jaguars. Think about it. Cam Robinson, who is typically at the very least a great run defender, was actually pretty bad last season. So this is a contract year for Robinson. So you can either keep him at tackle or you can have Jackson play their tackle or you can basically have one of them play right guard. Either or, I think you kind of win here by getting another offensive lineman. So they get better up front one way or another. Philadelphia Eagles going Justin Jefferson. Man, Jefferson. Now, this would give the Eagles someone with top tier ability in the slot, which they couldn't really get out of uh, Nelson Aguilar. But he can potentially, he has the size and speed to play on the outside. I'm a little iffy about that, but he has those traits. So they get that here. T Higgins going to the Vikings with the next pick, finding a new body for, or at least a new partner for Adam Thielen should be a top priority with one of these two first round picks. And the Higgins, he may, Higgins may not have the speed of like a Stefan Diggs, but he can stretch the field vertically. He doesn't just have size. He's a big body that Kirk Cousins would absolutely love to have. And then I got the Patriots going Zach Bond out of Wisconsin. This one was a tough one and I, hands down, it's the Patriots. They're probably going to trade down. I don't think they would go for Jordan Love. That's just my opinion though. Since they're, since I can't trade in this though, I have them grabbing probably a guy that's on their radar. They don't have a second round pick either. So it may seem like a reach here, but like I said, they realistically, they're probably trading down. But I mean, they get this guy. It's not like Zach Bond doesn't have any first round buzz. He definitely has some late first round buzz. So it's not exactly a big reach. And he could play kind of in that Jamie Collins role. New Orleans Saints, they go Patrick Queen out of LSU. I mean, Demario Davis, he's 31. And there isn't really anything special, at, or at least around him there at linebacker. Queen, sideline to sideline. Uh, he's a sideline to sideline athlete with great range. He can shut down everything underneath. Pick 25, Minnesota Vikings here again. Golan Jalen Johnson out of Utah. This is, this is more so, I love Jalen Johnson. I, I think he's one of the top corners in this draft. I think he's phenomenal. I think he totally deserves to be a first rounder. So I'm going to put him here. The Vikings, they were absolutely gutted at corner. And Johnson has the size. And he can actually play really any coverage you ask him to. He's a ball hawk there in the secondary. And if he gets a hold of the ball, he easily can be a pick six. He took three of his seven interceptions last season, or over his career, four pick sixes. TDs, touchdowns, six points, other way. I love it. I love it. And I mean, you could say Trevon Diggs, but do they really want to go through another Diggs? I don't think so. Grant Delpit being the pick for the Dolphins here. Now, They've done a good job filling holes in free agency, so they're in a position where they can take the best player available. And to me, that's Grant Delpit. Byron Jones, he was a great addition for the secondary, but they definitely need another safety. Delpit, uh, you could talk about his tackling concerns all you want, but his coverage versatility is top notch and very valuable in a pass heavy NFL. Seattle Seahawks, go AJ Epinesa. I know some people say this doesn't seem like a good scheme fit, but. I think it is. I, Pete Carroll, he likes his physical freaks. Epinesa, he can move up and down the defensive line, so I think it gives the, I think it gives them a lot of versatility that now they're going to be missing without Quinn and Jefferson. And then Baltimore Ravens, Clavon Chazon, Kenneth Murray is a popular choice here, in most mocks, but Chazon, he is a great value at this pick. He has athleticism, but really, you could even drop into coverage. He's just super athletic. I don't know if Judon is going to be traded away, but one way or another, I don't I don't think he's long for the Ravens roster. But he, either way, you need to get they need to get pressure cuz last year the Ravens they schemed up a lot of pressure, like bringing in their safeties. That's why you don't their linebacker or their safeties took like I think it was like 2200 snaps compared to linebackers with just under 1100 total snaps. 
so they don't use their linebackers a lot and you can say oh it's because they never really had any any uh quality players there but still they proved that they don't really want to either so if if they're not going to use linebacker that much then you can address it in day two you can address it shoot in in day three just take the best player available that's chase on Tennessee, they're going with Denzel Mims. Now, Corey Davis, he has been a bit of a letdown, which sucks. I really liked Corey Davis. But since they gave Tannehill all that money, then they should definitely invest in getting consistency from their receiving core. The Titans, they've been reported among a handful of teams that are that have been in contact with Mims. So, bam. Green Bay Packers, they get Kenneth Murray out of Oklahoma. I mean... They chose to let Blake Martinez walk, which is fine. He was a tackling machine, but I mean, what does that mean in the NFL? But yeah, they elect to basically get another sideline to sideline athlete. He can be, he'll be valuable against the run. He'll be, he at least has the physicality and the athleticism to be a solid blitzer. Didn't really display too much of that in college, but you got some tools to work with there. And then Cesar Ruiz going to the 49ers here. Uh, likely another trade down spot because they don't pick again until the fifth round. But you could go secondary because they got some contracts coming up there. But currently the right guard is Tom Compton with Mike Pearson gone now. So Ruiz, he's an ideal fit for Shanahan's zone blocking scheme. So I like the fit. Trevon Diggs falling here. Falling in my opinion. I think he's like a top 20 pick. But... Falling here to the Chiefs. They lost Kendall Fuller. I know they brought back Breland, but you shouldn't be that excited about it. Even like even Breland, they still need to address the corner position. The Chiefs, they use his own heavy scheme. Diggs, he's got a great combination combination of size and athleticism that he should be a good specialist there in his zone coverage. But that's it for the video. Go ahead, check out the day two and the day three videos. And uh, till next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.